Good morning, my lovelies. Good morning, children of God. A big shout out from Texas. But first, before we get into this lesson, I have to praise the Lord. Even though we were without power and without water, we didn't freeze, we didn't go hungry. We were blessed. I am also wanting to thank that I listened to my mom and my grandmother on the way they did things before everyone had all the luxuries that we have today. I'm glad I paid attention. And I'm glad I listened to the older generation to teach me how to survive, yes, coffee, when we don't have the luxuries. So. Thank you, Lord, for giving them the wisdom to pass on to us. That is so why it's important to listen to the generations before. And yes, I thought it was proper to drink from my Texas mug this morning. All right. So my first praise is God provided. Man did not. God did. So as I, let's get into this, let's have a thankful heart today. And if you're still without power and water, I am praying diligently that it is restored. And if I, you need anything, shout out to me on here. Send me a message. Go to my website, Real Truth for Christ. I will do what I can and with the resources that I have. All right, let's get into Exodus 24. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 3. Now he said to Moses, Come up here to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. God called Moses and the others up to the mountain, not to the top, but to the mountain. In Exodus chapters 20, verses 22, through cha chapter 23 through 33, God speaks to Moses alone. The others are to stay and worship afar. Moses had special access to God. God spoke to Moses, and Moses speaks to the nation. When Moses spoke to the people and told them all that God had said, the people agreed to be obedient to God. In their terrified sense of what they had witnessed, from seeing God's prayers, well, from hearing God's voice. They fully agreed. But my th thinking is, did they know what they were agreeing to without knowing how deep and complete God's law truly is? Do we as Christians understand God's law and how his word should apply to our lives and how we should be living? Do we truly understand do we dig in that? As you can see, you can see my cat in the background giving herself a bath. Sorry. But back to God's Word. Do we really, do we spend the extra time truly getting into God's Word and how it applies? Or do we go to church, hear the Word, and go home? It's for you to decide. Verses 4 through 8. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. <coughs> <coughs> And Moses took half the blood <clears throat> and put it in basins, and half the blood 
he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. In the previous verse, Israel verbally agrees to the covenant between them and God. We too verbally agree to the covenant with Jesus Christ when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. The Israelites must do specific things to confirm their covenant with God. First, it must be written. God did not rely on man's memory. He wrote it in stone. Once we are in a covenant with Jesus, he too requires specific commands of us. Notice God did not make a private covenant with them. God made a covenant with the nation. We have a private relationship, but when we decide to follow Jesus Christ, we enter into a whole covenant between Christ and the church. One God, one Jesus, one Holy Spirit, one word. You get the picture? We shouldn't be fighting over scripture. Second, there had to be a sacrifice. Sacrifice admits our own sin and failing before God. They had to have a death substitute. We too have a death substitute. He was our one and done, Jesus Christ. He fulfilled this sacrificial law. Third, the reading of the book of the covenant. They heard God's word and responded to it. Our covenant is also based on God's word and his terms. Not our own understanding, our own words, or our own terms. Covenant. Can't say, Holy Bible, study Bible, covenant. God allowed them to freely choose, just as we are allowed. But if we accept it, it is on God's word not man. God decides what's right, what's wrong. God decides where we go and where we stay. Fourth, the application of the blood. As the nation received the blood, the covenant was sealed. There was nothing magical about this blood. It just represents one How can I say this? Um, one non, non-condemned life, free life, been given to save another condemned life. The same with Jesus. He did no wrong. The animals did no wrong. We have to understand all this sacrifice and all this foundation points to Jesus Christ. But our pattern of the covenant follows the same pattern as the Israelites. Let's review it one more time. Word of God must be read. Sacrifice must be made. God calls each of us to sacrifice something. Receiving God's word. Applying God's word. And then receiving the blood of the sacrifice. This lesson will be short because there's only 18 verses, but it's a powerful one. We are no different than they were then. We're a little different because we have the foundation and we have the rules and the regulations. They were just getting them. But we failed to receive God's word. Or, thank you Holy Spirit. We fail to receive God's word on God's terms. Nine through eleven. Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, paved a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity. 
But on the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate and drank. Now we know no one can look upon the face of God. Let's turn to Exodus 33, 19 through 23. Well, I'll start with 19. Holy Spirit may have us go further, but who knows? You never know. 19. Do, 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 do. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. How about Deuteronomy 4? And I'll start with verse 9. Only take heed to yourself, and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in, in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days and they, and they live on the earth, that they may teach their children. Then you came near, and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. How about 1 John chapter 4? And I'll read verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love another, what love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. So we don't necessarily, and there's many more. So when Moses and the others went up to the mountain, they did they dare not look past the road leading the way. At this meeting, this glorious appearance for the seventy plus people and the children at the bottom to see, God conversed with them. God allowed them the spectacular sight to impress on them the reality of God's presence. It talks about the sapphire road. He was giving them a glimpse. God was showing them that his presence was real and that Moses conversed with God and they could trust Moses. Have you had a moment like this? Well, it might not be exactly like this, but nothing else could explain how it worked out but God. It turns you to that moment when you said, there's got to be something more. There's no other explanation but God. I love that saying, but God. My cat's getting up here. Sorry, guys. Let me put her down. But God, there's so many times in my life that that shouldn't have worked out, but God. And I look back over the path and have a lot of but God moments. All right, 12 through 18. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone. And the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them, them. See, Moses was to teach them the laws and the commandments. 
So Moses arose with his assistant, Joshua. And Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Ur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountains. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. God invites Moses to come closer. Moses goes and he takes Joshua. Remember, Joshua helped Moses in a battle and now has become Moses' assistant. The reason this was because God was preparing Joshua to lead the people when Moses was gone. Moses had every good reason to believe that leaving Aaron and Hur, Ur behind, they would be able to take care of the camp. I mean, he was gone 40 days and 40 nights. It's really not that long. But we will see a little later, they weren't so good at taking care of the camp. The presence of God was, all to, was for all to see. They didn't see God, nor did they see Moses, but they saw the fire and the clouds on the mountain. Do you see the presence of God in your life? Do you see his fingertip writing out your path? God calls us, just as he called Moses. God calls Moses out and to come into the cloud. Every bone, every muscle in Moses' body was looking at that fire saying, don't go in the fire. That's just human nature. But as Moses went, no matter how scared he was, he could see and feel the glorious presence of God. And he knew it was okay. And Moses trusted God. So therefore, he obeyed God. Guys, when we fully trust God, we will obey God no matter the cost. We will run into the fire. We will take the trials, the tribulations. We will take the mocking. We will take the persecution when we fully trust and obey God. Our foundation is being laid. It's up to you to build your house upon that foundation. I have no idea once this is over where God will have us go, but I'm gonna be obedient and continue to go. And I will say again, if my lessons tend your heart, that is God speaking to you, not me. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, that is God speaking to you, not me. If you say, I wasn't taught this, that is God building your foundation, not me. I have no, no part in this except to open my heart, my mind, and my mouth and do what is uncomfortable. But I will praise Jesus all the days of my life. Have a blessed day and we will see you so very soon.